We hope that we give them something. Flatirons Community Church in Lafayette, Heath Gum's family and his family in blue pulled words from their heartbreak to allow all of us to know their friend, their brother, their son, gone at the age of 31. Gumball, as they called him, gave epic high fives. He had a big, bright smile, and he loved adventures with his wife, Natasha. And his father, Jim, read a message from Natasha with a request for all of us. To everyone out there, I beg of you, can we please end these awful, pointless tragedies? Our brother has been taken, and though we wonder why, we'll still perform our duties as days then weeks go by. We'll travel where fate leads, through days of dark or fair, until we stand for roll call beside our brother there. His fellow officers say Heath was dedicated to law enforcement and brought new recruits under his belt very often. He was studying for a promotion and he was named an honorary detective after his death. Now, if you would like to watch this service, very powerful emotional service in its entirety, you can find it right now on our website. And within hours of Natasha's plea to end these pointless tragedies, a Longmont officer was hit by a car while in the line of duty. All new tonight, that officer was hit just off Main Street near Roosevelt Park in Longmont, trying to arrest a man convicted of forging checks. Here's a photo now of the man they are looking for tonight. His name is Richard Jeffs, and the officer injured was just released from the hospital within the past hour. 69 terminally ill people here in Colorado have received prescriptions for medication to end their lives. This is the first time our state has provided numbers since Colorado voters passed the medical aid in dying law. Well, tonight, Denver 7's Jacqueline Aaron, Allen shares one family's story of struggle. We were married 38 years. Almost a year after his wife, Kathy, passed away. I would paddle and she would fish. Herb Meyer says he has regrets. More back rubs, more foot rubs, just more time together. But one thing he doesn't regret. No, no, not at all. Is the way she chose to go. Our daughter was on one side of the bed and I was on the other and we held hands. For more than a decade, Kathy had been struggling with COPD, a respiratory disease. A lot of times it was a panic situation to get that next breath. At the end, she had to give up fostering the animals she loved, bedridden, in pain. She was one of the first to try Colorado's new law. How many doctors did you have to call? Oh, I probably called 75. A new report just released by the state health department shows of the 69 terminal patients who've received aid in dying prescriptions, 50 have had them filled. Herb says Kathy eventually got hers a month later she was ready. 100 tablets of secondol, and you have to break them open, dig the powder out of them, and then mix it with a, a sports drink. First, I tried a razor blade, and that didn't work. That just made them crumble. One thing I regret is not having somebody else mix it, because I lost an hour and a half that I could have spent with her there at the very end. They spent a lifetime together. This is our fourth grade class, pic class picture. But it's never enough. When they're gone, it's like you just lost half of you. Still, he believes she went peacefully, and everyone should have that choice. I still have people that call me and are looking for a doctor. People should be able to have a peaceful end if that's what they choose. So I'm willing to talk to anybody who asks questions. Jacqueline Allen, Denver 7. Tonight, we are breaking down the alarming new numbers from the CDC when it comes to the flu. Just within the past week, 16 more children have died, bringing the total number of childhood deaths in the U.S. this season to 53, including one here in Colorado. Right now, one in every 14 doctor visits is for flu-like symptoms. That is the highest level since the swine flu pandemic nine years ago. Seven-year-old Jackson's been in an Iowa hospital for a week and just opened his eyes, and he's now breathing on his own. Hi, Jackson. Oh, hi, honey. Jackson. This is not something that anybody should ever have to go through. All because of the flu. Doctors want all parents to hear this message tonight. They say if your child gets better and then gets worse, run to the emergency room. Developing tonight, the rapid growth we're seeing in the metro right now is spilling into our mountain towns. New numbers out tonight reveal a record year in Summit County. Listen to this, 852 new building permits, total value $244 million last year. And this graph shows the steady increase from 15 to 17. Developers say it's all about demand and say this is a good sign. The recession 
is really in the rearview mirror. But with a boom in development and real estate prices comes a growing homeless problem that doesn't seem to be getting any better. There's an intriguing solution though in Lakewood in the form of a big new housing development. Now it'll provide real resources to help homeless families transition to permanent housing. But this project will also be in one neighborhood's backyards. So we sent Jackie Crea to look at all sides of the story. Dome shelters, FEMA trailers, and tents will soon dot this barren plot of land in Lakewood. Attention passengers. And it has people talking. I think it would be a good idea. There's a lot of people that are struggling. I'm a single mother. Times are hard. One paycheck and I could be needing help like that. Help for hundreds of homeless people is on the way. But it took a fight. The Colorado Coalition for the Homeless had its eye on land at the Denver Federal Center to develop temporary and permanent housing for the homeless. Stand clear. The doors are closing. HUD officials said toxic materials from a landfill made it unsuitable for the homeless, but then tried to sell it for residential housing. So the CCH said not so fast. We filed suit saying that it couldn't be suitable for rich folks but not suitable for the homeless, and we won in court. CCH's CEO, John Pervensky, says Jefferson County's homeless population is directly tied to skyrocketing housing costs. We're seeing more and more families who are homeless for the first time, uh, people who are just not able to pay their rent, who are losing their housing. But some don't want it in their backyard. On next door and in the community, the debates keep on going. But there is hope the new development will win over its new neighbors. Homeless people might just have fallen on hard times. They just need somewhere to recover and get their lives back together. In Jefferson County, Jackie Crea, Denver 7. We're just getting started. For the first time, the worker who triggered that false missile alert is explaining why he did it. Plus, the second most expensive Super Bowl of all time means big savings for all of us. I'll let you know how much weekend snow is heading to Colorado. Next on Denver 7. Hundreds of Colorado families want us all to know they will never forget their loved ones who've gone missing, never to be found. Today, families gathered on the steps of the state capitol and read the names of their loved ones lost, and then they sent bubbles up to heaven. The mother of Dylan Redwine, who went missing in 2012, was there. Dylan would have been 19 years old next week. I'm out here today because it's it's important to keep our, our children and our our loved ones' memories alive and to keep their you know their pictures and their stories out there. Um, you know, I don't want anyone to forget about Dylan, and I know all these mothers here feel the very same way that I do. Many family members wore T-shirts or carried pictures of their loved ones. All new tonight, the fired Hawaii state worker who sent out that false missile alert is talking, and he says. He really believed there was a real attack. He described the call he received last month and insisted it did not sound like a drill, despite other workers who heard the word exercise multiple times. So Broncos fans aren't exactly big fans of this year's Super Bowl matchup, but everyone else seems to be. Pretty much. And right now, Patriots-Eagles Super Bowl 52 tickets are on track to be the second most expensive ever behind the 2015 matchup between the Pats and the Seahawks. The average ticket? Get this, it's going for more than five grand on StubHub. <laughs> the cheapest seats you can get are about $3,000. Of course, most of us lucky Yikes. ones will be watching for free from the comforts of our own couches. I like the sounds of that. For everyone feeling TV envy, though, this is the best time to buy a high-tech TV from the big-name companies. Number 7, Teresa Marchetta has the inside scoop. Jim Kim is on a mission this week. Place that's exactly 53 inches. He wants a new TV in time for Sunday's Super Bowl. Yeah, 4K, something that can handle fast action. Good news, he has picked a great time to buy. Yeah, Super Bowl is one of the best times to buy TVs. Casey Steele is a Best Buy HGTV expert. He says 4K is now the new standard, and 65 inches is the hottest selling size thanks to lightweight, super thin screens. 4K is actually a huge increase. It's four times the sharpness. Here's the biggest difference between buying a TV on Black Friday and shopping for one now. On Black Friday, you tend to get big sales on value brand TVs. But this time of year during the Super Bowl, you'll find big names on sale like Sony, LG, and Samsung. Um, of course, Samsung is the number one sold TV. 
Steele says if you want state of the art, look at Samsung's QLED or Sony and LG's OLED. The picture is much sharper and brighter. Those are kind of the ones that we really, we really specialize with for Super Bowl. Also, look for the term HDR. So HDR stands for high dynamic range. Which Steele says gives you the deepest black levels. Now you're looking for a Steele. Best Buy has 30% off many Samsungs, including a 65 inch Samsung 4K for $899. Sony's are pricier. They have a 65 inch for $1,099. And if you're on a budget, check out Sharp's 55 inch 4K for $399. So, right here we have LG's OLED model. LG 4K TVs are also on sale at their lowest price ever, Deal News says. Target and Walmart are advertising 65 inch LG 4K TVs for under $700. Ed and Judy Sherman were stunned how good all these 4K sets look. More real than life. <laughs> How about that? They are big, that that's for sure. That was succinct right pretty there. Good. Yeah, I like that. They're big and beautiful. How are we right. looking? Yeah, we have we're a weekend. We're looking pretty good for the have A combination of mild weather on the plains and snow in the mountains. It's a good thing to have. This is what it looked like today in time lapse from our camera. It's just to the east of Fort Collins in Alt. Melted off some snow up there, but those high clouds are signs of a change coming in the weather. Mostly that will be felt in the mountains this weekend. This is what it looked like up at Loveland this afternoon. And we're looking at several periods of snow accumulating to perhaps over a foot in the high country over the course of the weekend. Down here we hit 60 in the Denver area today. 21 was the low this morning. The normals are at 44 and 17. Getting cool out there right now, but not cold. 33 at the airport, 35 degrees downtown. Pressure is falling. Winds out of the south, southwest at 5. Headlines for the weekend. Lots of snow for the mountains. Mild and dry in Denver tomorrow, but colder with some flurries here in the metro area on Sunday. The reason, the jet stream. Strong winds aloft, pulling a cold front our way over the weekend. That's going to bring snow to the mountains and just a little bit of snow down here at lower elevations. Right now that front is pushing into Idaho overnight tonight. It will move down to Wyoming and just about to Salt Lake City by morning. In advance of it, we'll get a little burst of snow that hits the mountains with about two to four inches of fresh powder for skiing, but it's mostly from Aspen and Crested Butte north. Not much to see farther to the south. By morning, low temperatures have dropped down to 32 in Denver, so not really much different than they are right now. 25 at Leadville, 29 at Aspen, 23 in Greeley along the Front Range, almost 40 for a low temperature at Broomfield, 37 at Evergreen and Highlands Ranch. Tomorrow morning, snowy up in the mountains, dry and partly cloudy on the plains. The snows continue as that front moves in, for the mountains, about three to six inches tomorrow, but on the plains, just a couple of showers out in the northeast corner of the state and milder air in advance of that front. So 55 in Denver, 65 down at Pueblo, and we'll see readings mostly in the 30s and 40s farther to the west. That's the air that's coming our way for Sunday. 58 downtown tomorrow, 58 at Highlands Ranch, 55 degrees out at the airport. Tonight's forecast, 32, partly cloudy, not as cold, southwest winds. Tomorrow, the high temperature at 55. Mild and dry on the plains, but snowy up in the mountains. Looking ahead, the front comes through tomorrow night, moving through here by about uh, midnight or so, and more snow coming up for Sunday morning skiing in the mountains. The front goes by with some flurry.